Hey everyone, it's Lucas from Apple Fox, and I've already made a video about all of the good things about the iPhone SE, which has just been released, and now I want to make the color part of the video and talk about the bad stuff and the features I don't like that are part of the iPhone SE, or I don't like that they didn't include it. So it's gonna give you like a different perspective of the iPhone and before we get started I want you to click on the subscribe button so you don't miss future videos like these where I compare the iPhone SE and also unbox it when it gets like delivered to me. So yeah, make sure you subscribe and let's get started. I want to tell you that you shouldn't consider this video to be a hate. I really think that the iPhone SE is gonna be successful first thing that I don't like is the IP67 rating and like don't get me wrong it's not bad that the, the phone is actually water resistant I mean it's great and all but it's exactly the same thing as the iPhone 8 like nothing has been improved in terms of uh, the durability and you're not uh, supposed to submerge the phone at all I mean yeah you know what IP67 means but I expected to get IP68 at least which you can submerge the phone under the water like in four meters of depth for longer and here you can actually only put it in one meter underwater for about 30 minutes this is like the official official statement but it wouldn't really be that difficult if you think about it like they could um, do some sealing around the ports and uh, around all of the areas where it is required but of course they need to keep the price of the device low and all of the expenses so they can actually sell it for $400 I get it but I expected the IP68 rating. The second thing I miss in the iPhone SE second generation or the latest 2020 model is the lack of 3D touch. Nobody really thought that it's gonna be here. I mean, it's not a surprise at all. Apple just like removed it from iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro and all of the latest devices. So why should they keep it on the iPhone SE? Like, of course it makes sense, but um, I really like the 3D touch. It really makes the life faster. Like instead of it, you have a haptic touch, which is barely a feature in my opinion. Just think about it. What is a haptic touch? It is a long press accompanied by a vibration or a haptic feedback you get so it's not really a thing that uh, it's not like a real feature you're only doing long press you can in theory do all of them but with 3d touch you could do them a lot faster if you are interested in this topic like a little more then you can take a look at my video where i compare it in deep and tell you and show you exactly how much you can save when you have a 3d touch device and if you use like non 3d touch device for the, the very same stuff for the same actions so i definitely think that they should keep it but yeah this is just my opinion the battery situation with the iphone se is kind of funny because it's completely the same if you take a look at apple's website the iphone 8 which is like the predecessor is claiming to have about the same amount of battery life as the iphone 7 whereas the iphone se claims to have about the same amount of battery life as the iPhone 8. So pretty much you get on the SE the same battery life as on iPhone 7. It's just like a little more complicated. Yeah, pretty much no big deal. But the thing I'm trying to get to is that you get the fast charging support, but you're not getting the fast charger in the box, which kind of sucks to be honest. Like, you know, I'm talking about the 18 watt, which you have to buy separately for 30 bucks and it really makes a difference i know i'm using it all the time on my iphone 11 pro they should include it in the box we know what apple does with their accessories they always tend to overprice them and ask a lot more so i think that it wouldn't really kill them to put it into into the box at least we still have support for wireless charging so that's great uh, i'm not complaining there but if you want to get like really fast experience of charging then you gotta pay um, 30 bucks more for the fast charger the next thing that i would like to have on the iphone se second generation is a deep fusion which is not there correct me if i'm wrong but deep fusion is not part of the iphone se 2020 edition as far as i know so what is the deep fusion like a quick summary or uh, for the people that are not um, like really don't know what it is it's like a new image processing system which works automatically behind the curtains inside the iphone and the apple a13 bionic chip should be able to handle that like we have it on the iphone 11 pro and there it only requires that 
chip. So it only makes sense that the feature should be there. So I kind of guess that they missed out on that. And the last thing which I would expect to get on the iPhone SE second generation right now, and it is not there, is the support for Apple U1 chip. It's probably not going to be used or missed by many people because there is no real use of this chip right now. It doesn't really make sense to uh, look for it or to focus on this when it doesn't really make any sense. People don't know about it that much, but it is pretty much a chip which allows um, the phone to recognize other devices uh, which also have the U1 chip. So it is like aware of all of the things and all of the iPhones in that specific area, which can be used in many different cases. Like right now, you can only use it with uh, AirDrop and it only indicates which phones are closer to you and which are further away. Not sure what Apple is going to do about it, but it would be great to be like future proof and to put it into the iPhone SE whenever they release a software update. It is already there. So yeah, it's kind of expected, at least from my point of view, but what can you do about it? For most of the people, it's going to be completely uh, the same thing. Nobody would probably care that much about U1 chip because it's not really popular popular and doesn't really do anything right now. Okay, so this is the end. These were all the things that I don't like that are not part of the iPhone SE. If you want to see the other part where I talk about the, all of the good things which are part of the iPhone SE and there are plenty of great things, yeah, definitely take a look at the other content and uh, the other video about this phone. Also, stay tuned for unboxing reviews and all of that. So make sure you subscribe by so you don't miss future videos and also support the video with a thumbs up and see you guys later in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. It's been Apple Fox and see you guys later.